Hi, I'm Bill Langer, and welcome to another bow hunting production. In this video, we'll be hunting whitetails, black bear, antelope, turkey, and of course, feral hogs. This video is not about inches or antlers, trophies or record books. It's about the tradition of spending time outdoors with family and friends. So sit back and watch average bow hunters hunting average game for the love of the hunt. For our first hunt, we'll be hunting with Eldon Jandro of Custom Taxidermy and Hunter's Point Guide Service out of Portage, Maine. Eldon is a registered Maine guide and offers black bear, moose, and whitetail hunts. Come along as we follow my brother-in-law, John, on an early September bear hunt. We have hunted with Eldon for 10 years and have had some great luck. It's a great way to warm up for the upcoming deer season. Eldon's bear hunts are six full days of hunting and usually run Monday through Saturday. After strapping in and hoisting his bow up, John settles in for an evening's hunt. It's not long and John has action. Notice how cautious this bear is. He checks the wind and nervously paces through the bait site. This behavior is often the indication of a young or subordinate bear. Field judging the maturity of a black bear is often a question for bow hunters. When hunting over bait such as this, the barrel can be used as a reference. Notice as this young bear slips easily inside the barrel with six inches to spare above its back. If there is no barrel for reference, pay attention to the ears, which on a young bear will be towards the top of its head and more pointed and dog-like, as well as its body and legs, which will have a more slender and sleek look to them. The bait looks good. I expect to at least see that same bear tonight, I would think. He was never spooked by me the first night. He just fed four or five times and left. We'll see what happens. Well, unfortunately, nothing more happened at that bait, so Eldon moved John to a new setup. After only a couple of hours on a new bait, John has company. Take a look at how this older bear stands over the barrel by almost a foot, and it has to duck its head to get at the bait. Notice this bear's ears are rounded off and positioned more to the side of its head rather than towards the top. And the bear's midsection and hind end 
are fuller and more proportionate. I don't think John is going to pass on this Bruin. After checking John's trail in, the bear decides it's okay to eat and returns to the barrel. John waits for a shot. Throughout this video, we will replay the shot in slow motion to help illustrate the animal's reaction to the shot. I won't bet my life on it. But if I was a bet man, I would bet my life on it. That that deer is dead. Or, I'm sorry, deer. That's a bear, by the way. That that bear did not make it 75 to 80 yards, and I heard the death moan. John had a great week of bear hunting and made an awesome shot. We're after whitetails, and I've returned to an old honey hole that my father and I like to hunt throughout the deer season. Find a whitetail's food source, like this oak dropping acorns, and you should have some action. We want to emphasize that hunting should be about fun, about having a good time with your friends and family. And We think there's too much emphasis on shooting a big deer or trophy hunting, and that's all well and good, and there's a time and place for that. And the people who do it, there's nothing wrong with that. But we enjoy just hunting, deer hunting, uh, the way it was supposed to be, just for fun, for having a good time, for enjoying the outdoors, and, and being with your friends and family. It's February 19th, I'm down in Florida hunting feral hogs. Uh, it's a lot of fun to get away from the cold weather of Connecticut. Snow, freezing cold, visible weather. Get down here, we've got sunshine, t-shirt weather. Do a little hunting. 
High populations of wild hogs can be found in the south and southwestern United States. Most areas, hog hunting is open year-round and offers some great off-season bow hunting. Hogs are eating machines, and where it's legal, baiting with a little corn can increase the bow hunter's chance of getting a shot. My father has his eyes on the red board to the bottom of your screen, but the pig has different ideas. The next evening, just before dark, the red boar shows up again, and Dad's ready. red boar. I saw it first time in a, in a uh, big swamp and uh, wouldn't come close enough. Saw it two other times. Still didn't give me a shot. Finally tonight, just before it was out of uh, shooting light, came by. 15 yards, quarter and away, put it right in the chest. For the love of the hunt. Back to Maine, and my turn on one of Eldon's black bear baits. The bear's nose is hard to fool, so scent control is a must for bear hunters. Rubber boots to the knees, washing yourself and your hunting clothes in scentless soap, as well as staying clear of camp odors, will help increase your odds of getting an opportunity. But whether or not a shot presents itself, watching bears is always fun. This young bear started to get nervous and was checking the wind, but it was in my favor, so I started to question what it might be. It wasn't long and I had my answer. This big boy showed up and all I could hear was my heart pounding.
This was definitely the biggest bear I had ever seen while hunting. On his way to the bait, the bear found a donut that a squirrel had dropped. He picked it up and walked off to eat. Unfortunately, the bear worked its way downwind and eventually caught my scent and took off. But take a look at this slow motion footage. Eldon has some truly nice bears. The next day I was back on stand at 2.30 p.m. At 4, the young bear showed up and was my entertainment for the next half hour. At around 5.45 the clouds rolled in, and this nice bear was right behind them. He grabbed a piece of bait and was gone. Several minutes later the sun was back and so was he. I got ready for a shot. Like I said, I've been sitting here for a couple of days. The first day I saw a little one, maybe an 80 pound bear, about four o'clock in the afternoon, and then at 5.30 a really big bear came in. Uh, came towards the bait, didn't make it to it. Picked up a donut that the squirrel had dragged away. And, uh, took off and fed it, and then he ended up circling around and backing me again and winded me and spooked. 
So it came back to the same stand today. Had that same small bear come in around 10 after 4, was around until about 4.30. And then at about quarter of 6, this bear came in. And uh, because that bigger bear had spooked yesterday, I decided to, to take him. He came in once and then left and then and came in again. But nice main black bear. Got it all on film. It felt good. This is a great way to learn your follow through and form. Let's roll, baby. Here's a Florida hog hunt with John. Guess which hog he's got his eyes on. Uh, I've been down here in Florida for 10 years now, hunting feral hogs in southern Florida. And uh, by far, this pig right here is the biggest pig I think I've ever seen or shot. I know it's the biggest one I've ever shot. It went uh, about 50 yards, didn't give me much blood, but I did see it go down and went and retrieved it. And believe it or not, this thing has a live weight of 254 pounds, which is, you know, a significant amount of, amount of weight for a feral hog in southern Florida. That pig that John shot was one of the best tasting hogs we ever had. Hopefully we'll have some hogs come in today. It's a little windy. Down here in South Florida again chasing feral hogs like we love to do. It's pretty windy up in this perch right now. <laughs> the cameraman's about to blow out. But give it a couple hours here till dark. Hopefully a hog will come in. The hogs did show up, but offered no shots. So we tried our luck at a little spot in stock.
Well, that didn't work either, so I decided to get a haircut to change our luck. Never underestimate the power of a haircut. back to the camp and show the guys. Perfect long shot, didn't go very far. 40 yards maybe. Dad's on a turkey hunt and I'm running the camera. He's made one call to a tom that we heard on the roost before daylight. We have found that calling as little as possible seems to work best, especially once the bird has a visual on the decoy. Try it and see if it works for you. The father doesn't have a shot, and the Tom's getting suspicious. Next time. Another day, another setup. But rain is closing in, and I'm worried about the camera.
My dad's in a blind about 20 yards to my right, and the bird is closing in. Dad made a great shot, but the rain hit and we had to put the camera away. Dad's behind the camera this time, and it's my turn to try for another whitetail. Before long this doe shows up and is about to enter one of my shooting lanes. Alright, there she is. Good deer. Good doe. Nice mature doe. That's good. Made a good hit on her. Uh, she came in about 10 of 6 with another doe. Do you remember your first bow hunt? Or the first animal you took with bow and arrow? That feeling of exhilaration? Knowing that all your hard work, preparation, and scouting had paid off? That kid in the candy store feeling? That words just fail? Well, in this next segment, we're going to watch bow hunters take their first animals. So sit back and watch this. Here is some vintage home video of my cousin Bobby on his first black bear hunt with a longbow he made himself. His brother Mark is filming while Bobby gets ready for a shot. Traditional bow kill. My homemade longbow. It only went probably 20 yards stops. This hunt is with my good friend Jim Pennington, and although Jim has taken several hogs with his compound, this is his first hunt with a recurve. I think Jim is sold. 
on traditional bow hunting. Whoever said traditional bows aren't effective? My father's running the camera for my brother-in-law Eric's first big game harvest ever. Shot this little three-pointer last night at 6.15. I made a good hit, started to rain right away, lost the blood trail. So resumed tracking next morning. Found about 150 yards away. Uh, just love the bow hunt, doesn't matter the size of the animal. Our friend Ben Donowski had to get himself a recurve and try out this hog hunting that we were always telling him about. This was a nice boar. I liked the looks of them. It was my first pig hunt, so I decided I'd take it. This is a hunt from 1994. My girlfriend, now wife Katie, is running the camera. And although it's not my first deer, it is my first on video after trying for several years. I had watched these two does feed in a small field for a couple of days, waiting for Katie to get a chance to come with me. The deer were hitting the clover before moving off over the ridge to feed on acorns. The stand site we picked was perfect. What a perfect hit. Yes. 
I'm behind the camera this time, joining my old friend Don Valley on his first traditional bow hunt for urban whitetails. Notice the vegetable garden in the background. The deer have wiped it out, so the landowner called us in for a little help. Bow hunting is the only economical, safe, effective way to control overpopulated urban whitetails. We have found that hunting urban areas on overcast, rainy, weekday afternoons and wearing civilian clothes to and from hunting areas helps reduce conflict with the non-hunting public. Well, we wrapped it up, we found the deer. Uh, we shot the, I shot the deer at the quarter after six last night. Poor hit, we knew it was a poor hit. Um, as much as I wanted to get out of my stand and go look for it, we knew the best option was to let it sit, back off, and track in the morning. It's, it's one of the toughest things a deer hunter has to do is back off a deer that he just shot. I mean, the, the natural instinct is just go running after it, but common sense says it just doesn't work like that. You're going to have to back off, give it some time, be patient, and, and wait till the next morning or, uh, you know, if you shoot it in the morning or the next afternoon. But uh, it worked out well. Um, it didn't go far. The tracking was, was very tedious, so it took a long time. Uh, we didn't have anybody move up forward ahead of where the tracks were. We had four guys, and we didn't want to ruin any type of the faint, the faint sign that we that we had, we didn't want it ruined by, by a foot stepping over it. I think patience was the patience was the uh, the key to finding this deer. I've traded places with my hardworking cameraman Pete O'Brien. Pete has spent many hours over my shoulder, and now it's his turn to try bow hunting. Pete is a fun-loving, happy-go-lucky sort of guy. He has never harvested an animal with bow and arrow.
After watching the hogs for an hour, Pete got impatient and wanted to try a stalk. Notice how Pete has his shirt on backwards. He says it so the hogs can't tell which way he's looking. That stalk busted, Pete decided to try stalking one of the feeders on the property. After the pig spooked, we decided to sit the feeder for the rest of the evening, and you won't believe what Pete pulled off. What a shot! What a hunt, baby! Southern Florida hog oh hunt, February 2001, baby. I said 35 yards and right down. First traditional bow kill here. Unbelievable, unbelievable. 20 yard shot, pig moving a little bit. Man, what a shot. What a thrill, look at this. 100 pound hog, unbelievable. Look at the size of this guy. Right down, 35 yards, I wish all track could be this easy. And he did it with my bow. I traveled to Laramie, Wyoming for my first pronghorn antelope hunt. A lone coyote was all I saw for the first couple of hours. But as the sun heated up the day, antelope came to drink, distracting me from the screech of the windmill. Techniques for bow hunting antelope include spot and stalk, the use of decoys, or sitting a blind overlooking a water source like I have chosen. A good set of binoculars, snacks, plenty of drinking water, and a boatload of patience are all a must when bow hunting antelope. When this nice buck came to 10 yards, I decided to move into position for a shot.
They all caught my movement, and I missed as they trotted off. Several adjustments to the blind, and a few bottles of water later, I had more antelope coming to drink. Eldon's bear camp was once again our destination, and my best friend, Rob Eustace, decided to try for his first black bear. Rob's taken a deer with his bow, but has never hunted black bear. After a couple days on stand, Rob finally has his chance. my first year up on up on the bear hunt and everything everything's been great the hunters point guide service with Eldon Jandro it's, it's just been great I have no complaints I was I was on two active baits and so well video cameras weren't invented but here's a picture from 1964 of my father and his first bow kill
time to time, someone will ask how I shoot a traditional bow. They'll say, how do you shoot it accurately or aim? What I tell them is there's two different techniques, one being gap shooting, the other being instinctive shooting. Now, there's a lot of books and videos out on the subject that you can find in most bow hunting magazines around the internet. I'm not going to get too in depth, but we'll give you a short introduction to get you started. Now gap shooting involves using a point of aim, such as the tip of the arrow. What a shooter will do through practice is use the tip of the arrow as an aiming point and hold it higher or lower on the target depending on the distance to the target. Now another gap shooting technique is to draw an anchor close to the eye, sighting down the shaft to the target. And what some shooters will do is hold three fingers underneath the knocking point in order to get the knock closer to the eye. Now I'm an instinctive shooter. What instinctive shooting means is I pick a spot within the target and concentrate on it. And through eye-hand coordination, I draw, hit anchor, and release, all the while keeping my eye on that spot within the target until the arrow buries into it, similar to what an NFL quarterback or major league pitcher does. They hit their mark without aiming. Once you have a bow that is properly set up for you, I would recommend standing 12 or 15 feet from the target and working on fundamentals. Draw the bow smoothly, hit a consistent anchor point, smooth release, and follow through. I'll touch on specific fundamentals. Drawing the bow smoothly. Whether you hold the bow up, come to anchor point or use the swing draw, try to draw smoothly. It'll help you hit your consistent anchor point. Anchor point. Whether you anchor underneath the eye, at the corner of the mouth, or on the chin, it's very important to hit the same anchor point every time. It will ensure consistent arrow placement. Smooth release. Try to keep that hand at anchor point after the release. Try not to pluck the string. That'll help you keep the arrow on target. Okay, follow through. Very important. After you've released the arrow, hold that bow arm up as you watch the fletching bury into the target. Try not to move to look for the shot or drop the bow arm. That'll keep you more accurate. Once you are consistently hitting at 12 or 15 feet, move back to 20 or 25 and so on. Now if you see your consistency or accuracy start to waver, move back to 12 or 15 so as not to become frustrated. Now let's take a look at some bow hunts where the hunters just couldn't keep it together. Thank you. 
Ceremonial cutting of the shirt. He his missed. Fa his, Billy's father wants this shirt cut because he missed a beer, but he doesn't realize he missed two beers. <laughs> 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 and we got a duel here because this guy missed you know, two. This too, is so bad. Two cut also. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh nice shirt. Sure. <laughs> but oh. this camel, you can't tell because it all looks broken up. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I'm bleeding. My, well, then I my second year up here, I lost a good shirt. <laughs> Well, that's bow hunting for you. Sometimes we miss. Now let's join my father on a mid-October deer hunt. Unfortunately, when the sun set, I left the filter on the lens of the camera, so the footage is a little dark. Good. Okay, we got blood here. Good blood here, Bill. Good blood. That's nice. Yeah, we got, a, we got a good blood flow here. That deer didn't go, what, 75 yards at the most? At the most, yeah. It didn't go far at all. Yep. I, I read an article today about a fella that he, he got his deer every year. Didn't matter whether it was a big buck, small buck. Every year he took a buck, thoroughly enjoyed himself. And then one year he put pressure on himself to, to uh, take only a mature big buck. And he didn't, he didn't take a buck that year. And unfortunately he had such a miserable time that he gave up hunting and has never hunted again. And this is an article written about uh, this fellow's buddy. You know, for the love of the hunt, it doesn't matter whether you take a buck, a doe, just, just to be out there hunting, uh, enjoying the, the outdoors. Uh, Today was Friday the 13th. I was kind of joking with my son. I said, it's my best day, Friday the 13th. Um, hey, it paid off. It was a good day. This dough is uh, going to be thoroughly enjoyed eating and certainly got a thrill uh, harvesting this animal. Pete finally gave me my bow back and assumed the role of cameraman, just in time for another Florida hog hunt. As the sun set, hogs materialized and started to feed on the corn we had put out.
just before dark, just before dark. Mosquitoes are bad. I got them, looks like a perfect hit. Looks like an absolutely perfect hit. Nice pig, really nice pig. Your generic run of the mill, black, little black boar, but nice little pig. Can't wait to bring this home to see, show it to the guys. Look at that. With a longbow in hand, my father has his eyes on another red hog. The hog doesn't even know it's hit, and the black pig is oblivious to the quietness of a traditional bull. Stand. It's just about quarter after seven. A little black uh, black pig came in, and then the red boar here. Nice, nice little boar, 70, 75 pounds. Uh, close shot. Shot it with a long bow and see the shaft and a two-blade sharpen yourself broadhead made in Australia. Uh, pig, it went right through the pig. It didn't even react to the shard hardly really know that it was hit. It was just a clean pass through and uh, I'd say it went about 70 yards. Uh, excellent hit. Dad's behind the camera and with just an hour before we have to be on a job site, I try a little grunting and rattling on an early November whitetail hunt.
There's good blood on the arrow. Man, this worked out perfect. We're on our favorite oak tree again. Blood looks really good on the arrow, so we'll take up the trail right away. We got good blood right here. Blood's been pretty good here. It's starting to get into a little bit more open woods. I'm gonna shed some clothes off and we'll keep going on the trail. Come back and get these clothes later. This one's even got handles. I hope you enjoyed our video. Keep your eyes out for future productions. And remember, ensure the future of our sport. Take a child hunting or fishing. Hi, I'm Bill Langer, and welcome to another boating production. In this video, we'll be hunting whitetails, black bear, antelope, turkey, and of course, those feral hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Langer and welcome to another bow hunting production. In this video we'll be hunting whitetails, black bear, antelope, turkey, and of course feral hogs. This video is not about inches or antlers, trophies or record books. It's about bow hunting. It's about bow hunting. <laughs> Plain and simple, it's about bow hunting. <laughs> Plain, and, plain, and, plain and simple. Plain and simple, it's about bow hunting. <laughs> when you gotta go, you gotta go. God today. I want no messing around. We're looking for moose. There's moose out in their water. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Donnie? This is very unsafe condition. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You were, when you were dragging it, it hit the limb? It, it hit this branch and it just popped off. <laughs> Warning. Parental discretion advised for this next segment. This is not staged or a practical joke. This guy actually walked through the field I was hunting on private property. I was not happy to say the least.
That guy wasn't even worth shooting, he was only a spike horn. Stomach's growling. <laughs> you just start gnawing on your deer right now. But you can't beat the meat. <laughs> Pick up the deer. So my my uh, videographer put it on me taking the shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out here this morning with. Uh, Billy Banger, we're having a little hunt out on this island. Uh, we're bird hunting, as you can hear them behind us, blasting them away. Hammer. Uh, waiting for the deer to come right down through here. I don't know if it's going to happen for sure. And, uh, we'll hang out here for a couple of hours to see what happens. Maybe we'll get something, maybe we won't. But it should be fun. <laughs> Sounds like we're in Beirut. <laughs> Listen to a hammering down there. Read a book. Damn. It's a lot harder than it looks. I'll put the first one in the Where are the pigs at? I don't know what I know. I don't know if anyone's find them. I'm going to be off to the film. <laughs> sponsors on this trip. And I would like to uh, I would like to thank those sponsors. Want to thank, Very uh, last, but not least. Old Stein will practicing for when he hits the big time. It's a good bow. I want to thank Easton Arrows for for making a fine shaft. And I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, TEL Incorporated for their, for their tree pods. Uh, TEL is a good company and made this good tree pod and thanks TEL for, for the use of this. Uh, so, um, D Valley Productions makes these strap-on steps. I want to thank uh, D Valley for the use of this. It, it helped out. I want to thank um, I want to thank Jess and Dan for the use of their camera. And I think it's working well. Thanks, guys. And finally, uh, Bill Langer Productions makes these safety harnesses. And without this, my shot wouldn't have been possible. I want to thank uh, Bill Langer Productions. And this trip was made possible by Bill Langer Productions. And I want to thank you very much, Bill Langer Productions, for, for this trip. It was, uh, it's been a blast. And we still have a few more days. But uh, remember, I want to thank, thank all of you. If I left out anyone, um, I want to thank you too. That's it.